Awesome. Well, you know, I was um, putting this message together a couple weeks ago as I started on this and finished it this week, and, and I was talking about, um, you know, going to be, be uh, strong and mighty. If you want to just grab your Bibles with me, this is where I started with this. Open up to Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. And uh, you, you kind of get an idea where my mind goes sometimes. So this, I was reading this, and I started off, I was reading... Finally, be strong in the Lord and his, and in his mighty power. And I began to immediately think about, as I was watching on TV, on the Discovery Channel, these big tractors. As soon as I saw the big tractors, I knew, all right, I'm stuck here for the next 30 minutes for an hour, however long this program is, because I'm going to watch these tractors. And this guy, yes, this guy pulls out this tractor out of this Quonset in North Dakota somewhere, and it's got three tires on each side of the front and three tires each on the back. I'm like, that is a mighty tractor. That thing can do anything. He's out there in a the field and he's got this disc thing that's tearing up the field. And he's got this little machine that sits where it pulls and it sits there and measures how much that plow is pulling. This guy's pulling like 42,000 pounds. I'm like, that's pretty awesome. My tractor pulls like 500. And this thing pulls like 42,000 pounds. I'm thinking, that is a strong and mighty tractor. That's pretty, that's pretty strong. And I was, I was like, wow. And then the guy gets out and he walks beside it. And then I realize how big that thing really is. The guy could sit inside the tire rim. I was like, that is big. I'm going to go to North Dakota and go see this thing. I mean, that's going to be like my vacation. That thing is huge. I was thinking, so I'm here reading the Bible. and thinking about strong and mighty. And the thing that comes to my mind immediately is this powerful tractor. And so I'm thinking as this, I'm, as I'm writing this message, so all of you know, if you take a big deep breath, maybe you'll smell some diesel. I don't know, but uh, I do. Because I'm thinking of this. Because, you know, God has an amazing plan for our life. He has an amazing plan for our lives. As I think of, of that tractor and how amazing that thing is designed to pull and to, to move dirt. That thing is amazing. And, I, and as I look at that in my life, I'm thinking, okay, be strong and mighty is the challenge that I have this morning as I'm reading this. And I'm thinking, all right, I get this picture in my mind. I can smell some diesel in my office. This is all right. I get this. And I begin to think in my life is that God has a plan for me to be extremely strong and mighty and successful. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a tractor. <laughs> but I began to think about it. My God has a plan for me to be extremely strong and mighty. But I also know that the enemy has a plan to destroy me. Satan has a plan to destroy my life, to take away this amazing plan. And the thing that I find with each of us is that who we align our thought process with is who wins. I know as I was a youth pastor, I used to have a, have a picture of a big, huge old bulldog and then a picture of a little itty bitty chihuahua. And uh, I said, the one that you feed is the one that's going to win. If you don't feed the big, huge monster bulldog, the little chihuahua's going to win. Who you feed, who you align with, who you put your thought process with is where your life's going to lead. And if you understand that God is saying, I have a plan for you to be strong and mighty, and you align your life with that, the works of the enemy fade away and become distant in your life. You look back in your past. You look back in, at some of the struggles that we walked through. You look back, look back at some of the storms in your life, and you're like going, I made it. I was strong, and I was mighty. I know many times I've been, uh, a couple of times I've been out in some wicked storms in a boat. And I remember one time I was out there in a little boat. I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like it when water came over and I wasn't in a self-bailing boat. <laughs> Eric was screaming for his life, but no, we were okay. But I've been in a time when I've been in a big boat and there was bigger waves 
And I'm eating my lunch and drinking my Coke and talking as I'm going through the storm because I'm not worried. You see, who we align our thought process with is the outcome of our life. So we need to learn to understand that I am strong and mighty. So let's look at the rest of this. Ephesians chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I pray that you open up our heart, that we'll receive the word of God, and that it'll change us and draw us closer to you. We pray. Amen. You see, as I did the last, the last four Sundays as I've talked about this, I cannot stress the most important thing. If you want to know one thing that Pastor Russ believes, one thing that I want you to believe, one thing that I want you to hold on to is that this scripture is the infallible word of God. For the last four weeks, I've said that every Sunday, and I'm telling you again, this scripture is the infallible word of God. And if you want to be strong and mighty, you must hold to this scripture. Amen? It's not some great book that somebody wrote that, that, that persuades man. It is not some sort of a help self uh, guide that somebody's put out. It is the scripture that is the infallible word of God and that we must place into our lives. And I want you to know that we must learn to trust word, God's word and place it into our lives. You see, the promises and the concepts are true. And it is something that we must learn to build our life on. And whenever I say that, I think of that little song when I was a kid. The wise man built his house upon the rock. You guys remember that as you little kids? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the self-help book. The foolish man built his life on the self-help book. Now, maybe it's a little bit different now. But, but we can understand that when we place this in our lives, when we put the scripture in our life, it is something that we can build our lives on. So as we look at this, I want us to open this up in our lives and to place this. But 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says this. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. I have seen this. I have seen this in Christian lives. I have seen this. I have walked, through peop walked with people through times and storms in their life. I have, I have seen people uh, fall and be outwitted by Satan because they become unaware of his schemes. I have walked with a lot of Christians who have no idea about the schemes. They have no idea about the tax that is happening in their lives. And it breaks my heart to see when Christians completely are succumbed, but when they're completely in, in, engulfed, when they completely are captivated by the enemy and his attacks. And I watch as marriages are destroyed, families divide and broken, friendships end, Christians walking in a defeated life, and at the end of the day, many people find themselves literally shell-shocked with no idea what just went wrong, no idea why their life and their relationships are being destroyed. You see, ignorance shouldn't surprise us. We should know. We should know what the Word of God says so that we will not be outwit by Satan. You see, the number one plan of the enemy is to mask the presence of God, to make us think that we are indeed battling against each other, 
to make us think that we indeed are at a war of flesh and blood. We see that. We see it everywhere. We see country against country, nation against nation, race against na- a race. We see family against family. We see husbands against wives. We see sons against their fathers, mothers against their daughters. But what does the Bible say about this? It says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, not against each other. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, it says, the Bible says and calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. The Bible also just suggests that Satan has the ability to put thoughts directly into your heart and and, and, and directly into your head and into your mind. And one of Satan's biggest deceptions is that we think that we think that his thoughts are our thoughts and we listen to them. We see that Jesus talked about this with his disciples. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, Jesus returned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You don't have the mind and the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And in John chapter 3, verse 2, the evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon, Ariscot, to betray Jesus. Acts chapter 5, verse 3. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? You see, so often when we read the words of of Ephesians chapter 6 and uh, verse 12 about not wrestling against the flesh and the blood, I think at times we externalize it. We push it away from us. And we think, oh, this is, this is other people. This is, this is people in the world. And uh, this is, this is the, the secular side of government. This is, this is society that I live in and the culture that, that's out there. But what we forget is that we ourselves are made of the same flesh and blood as others are. And we have to ask ourselves, whose flesh and blood are we fighting against? Just maybe we need to look a bit closer at ourselves. Into our hearts and our lives. Some of the thoughts that we have accepted. Some of the things that we have been conditioned to listen to. Some of the just judgments and the, pre, the, the things that way we embrace. and The way we were raised up. The way we look at things. It's amazing to me how we can grow up in different areas and have complete different judgments and things that we hold to and embrace to ourselves. We have held things in close to our lives that aren't actually true, that weren't originated in truth. And from sometimes, a lot of times, from our own thoughts. I know one time I saw an accident. My wife was sitting in the middle of the car. She saw the accident. And my best friend, Trevin, was sitting in the driver's seat. And he saw the accident. All three of us saw the accident. And the car ran off. We were in Bozeman, Bozeman, Montana. We all three saw the accident. I had a different color of the car that I saw. We all three had a different license plate number. It didn't line up. And I remember it was like a week later, the sheriff calls back to ask Trevin, you know, the license plate number that we gave him was was not the car that we saw. And he goes, by chance, would it be this number? Would it have been a a two in front of it instead of a, and on he went with the story. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, maybe it was. Sometimes we see something. Somebody else sees the exact same thing and they see it different. Sometimes I see something and my wife sees something and we see it different. And then I correct her. (laughs) And then she corrects me, right? Oh, I didn't say that out loud. We'll erase that on the recording. Nice knowing me. Thank you. 
You see, sometimes we hold to a truth because we experienced it, we saw it, and it actually is not the truth. And we hold to it. And sometimes we will start a war at home or with someone because we're holding to something that we think and know that it is a truth. I mean, we would pass a lie detector test because we think it's that much the truth. Does this really happen? I'm I'm telling you, I saw this. And we hold to something because the way we saw it, our perception, and all of a sudden we find out that we hold to something as if it's the truth and it's not. Woo! That's scary in our lives when that happens. And we must realize that this can happen to everything that we see in our perspective except for that of the word of God. Okay? This is, in, this is the word of God. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual weakness in high places. It's a new word. Scripture makes it clear that Satan has the ability to put thoughts and suggestions into the minds of those who are even, even following Jesus closely. And we saw that in Scripture. Those that were with Jesus physically together, Satan put thoughts in their mind. But what do these thoughts sound like? How how can I identify them? How can we identify these thoughts? How can we stop them from clouding my judgment? How can I stop these thoughts from Satan in my life? Well, I think one of the keys is found in the scripture especially from Revelation that calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. I want to challenge you. And I, this last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about this. And I found it. I did it quite a bit in my life. And so I want to challenge you for the next week or two weeks to think about some of your thoughts. Think about your thoughts. That's a tough one from Russ. Yeah, some of you, like, you do have thoughts, But I want you to think about the way you're thinking about your thoughts. Is that fun? There you go. Some of you probably need to write it down. Take ownership of your thoughts that are in your head. And I want to share with you some of the thoughts you will hear if you take time to listen to your thoughts. Because our thoughts are selfish. Our thoughts are selfish. And I want you to know that these thoughts that you are having, you, everybody has these thoughts. You're not unique. When they expose themselves to you, everybody has these thoughts. And if you were honest and took time to listen to your thoughts, you will see this. You might even find some of the same words or very similar words, where are my words again, around your head as well. So if you're taking down all my new words today, you're going to be writing down a lot of new words. But I'm telling you this. This is what you'll hear in your mind and your thought process. You'll hear the word you. You're no good. You can't do that. You know what? You've tried and you failed last time you tried. So don't you try it again. No one will listen to you. You can't do that. You can't be the spiritual lead of your family. What will your wife think? You're a failure. One of the worst things, you're ugly. We have these thoughts in our mind. We hear it and we hear the word you. Thoughts are designed to break up fellowship and break up friendships. And thoughts get aimed at getting us suspicious or hurt by other people. Emotions hurt. And Satan specializes in this. And you'll hear thoughts like, they're talking about you behind your back. 
They're out to get you. They're setting you up. They're telling lies about you and people believe them. They don't like you. They think you're ugly too. You see, we find ourselves listening to the word you. And what happens? We change it to our thoughts and we say I. I'm no good. I can't do that. I am ugly. I am a failure. Others do talk about me. You see, listen to this key. One of the most principle, one of the most important principles you will hear and place into your lives is to understand that the accuser starts to use you and he uses the word you. When the accuser is after you in your thought process, write down it, you will fail. If you hear you, where does that come from? That thought comes from the accuser. And pretty soon you will find yourself saying, I, because you will partner yourself with the dog that you feed the most. So if you find yourself listening to the accuser and you hear you are a failure, pretty soon you will say, I am a failure. You can't succeed, I can't succeed. Nobody likes you, nobody likes me. Your thoughts start with I. So I'm going to challenge you for the next couple of weeks. If you're fighting that mental battle, to write it down. Write it down, write down your thoughts. Mine are so scrambled, I don't know if I could read them after I'm writing them down, but you know what I'm saying? Write down your thoughts. Listen to what your thoughts are saying. If it is coming as an accuser, you cannot. I'm challenging you to discipline your mind and to fight against it. Because God has a plan that you are mighty, that you are strong, and has a great plan for you. And that plan is not, you're a failure. But we battle this in our minds. Oh, the sky is falling. You ever heard that? The sky is falling in my life. Everything's coming apart. This thing is going to be no good. I got a horror. How does that happen in our lives? Because we listen to the accuser and we feed the accuser and give the accuser our time in our mind and we feed the little mutt and we starve the great and mighty. We need to learn at this time to think about what we are thinking. When we understand that we are great and mighty, we place that into our lives. We think about that. It's like the little, the little engine. I could, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. You can. I can, I can. I can do this. I can stand above this storm. I can. I can walk in faith. I can live a life. I can raise my kids. I can have a successful marriage. I can. I'm telling you, we all deal with the thought process. We all struggle listening to the accuser of brethren. Because it's easy to fall off the edge of negativity. Something goes wrong, we all look at what? The negative side. I remember when I was in, first time I ever heard this, I was a youth pastor in, in Bend, Oregon, and some things had kind of gone crazy, and and uh, I just got creative, and it all turned out all right. And I remember my pastor going, he goes, you know, you're the only guy that I know that could fall in the sewer and come out with a ham sandwich. <laughs> I remember that. I laughed. I thought that was funny. But I think about that. 
I don't care the situation. We, if we want to look at the negative, we can have the little things in there. We can look at the negative and we can expound on that. We can live on that. We can build our life on that negative. But when bad things happen, why can't we find the positive out of it? Why can't we discipline our minds and say, oh, yeah, that's, that's not so great, but you know what? This is going to be the deal. I might, I might have fallen in the soup, but I'm going to come out with a ham sandwich. You see, when we discipline our minds and we don't get captive, we understand God has a great and mighty plan for me. And even though this storm or this situation happened over here, you know what? I'm going to make it. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be mighty. I can do this because God has a plan for me to succeed. Yes. That's where I want to be. You see, the solution to this is in is in the rest of this, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18. Let's read this whole thing together. Grab your Bibles. Finally, be strong in the Lord and mighty in power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand. I love that. So you can take your stand. Strong and mighty says I can take the stand. I can take this. I can do this. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggles is not against the flesh and blood, and against, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, some of you guys need to circle that right there. Therefore, I lost my place, I can't read. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of the truth. Well, the belt of the truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which you will extinguish all flaming arrows from the evil one. Take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray. Pray in the spirit in all occasions with kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. I love that. Take your stand against the devil. What does that say? Be strong. Stand. Stand firm, as it says in verse 11, against the strategies and the tricks of the devil. Verse 13, so that after the battle, you will stand and be still standing firm. And verse 14 says, stand your ground. What does this mean? It means don't run away. Don't run away. Don't leave your spouse. Don't leave your family. Don't surrender to those words and those thoughts that you were having that destroy you, that says you're ugly, that says you can't do it. Don't do that. Don't surrender to those. React to those thoughts in your head and stand against them. Don't automatically believe everything you think because you're lying to yourself. Stand for the truth because you know the truth. You know God has a plan for you and we know the truth. And if we place it into our lives, don't run away from it. Stand. Stand strong. Someone standing in the middle of the battle, uh, stand when someone just standing in the middle of the battlefield is an ideal target for the enemy. No, you don't just stand in there. That's why this passage talks about spiritual warfare and gives you a battle of strategy. It's not good enough to stand up in the middle of the battle, totally exposed. That's crazy. Totally unprotected? Don't do that. It's not enough to stand in the middle of a battle with your thought life on your own strength. You'll get annihilated by your own thoughts. 
You will succumb to your own thoughts. You will grab the negative side. You will run to the accuser of brethren and you will place it into your lives and you will place it into your life as if it's truth. You will believe you're no good. You will believe you're ugly. You will believe you can't do it and that you're a failure. You will believe that if you find yourself in this field without understanding what the scripture is telling us to do and it's telling us to put on the spiritual armor put on the armor of God this is what we must do verse 13 therefore put on the full armor of God so when the day of evil comes you will be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist So what do you do? You begin to pray, Lord, I put on the belt of truth today. I choose my lifestyle of honesty and integrity today. I believe the truth. I believe your word. Show me the truth. I need them today. Expose the lies of the enemy. And in my thought process, Lord, help me to understand and to know, to know you. With the breastplate of righteousness in place, Lord, I wear your righteousness today against all condemnation, against all corruption. Fill me with your holiness and your purity. Defend me against the assault of my mind and the assault of my heart. And with my feet, in verse 15, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, Lord, I choose to live the gospel today. I choose to live this and place this in my life today. I am not ashamed of the gospel. And give me the the heart to share your love to whomever I come with. In verse 16, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith in which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Jesus, I lift your name against every lie. I lift your name against every salt that tells me anything contrary to your holy word. Anything that is contrary to this that affects my life. Anything that is contrary to this that is the truth. I come against it today in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's fight the battle. Let's just not stand in the middle of the war zone going, hmm, this is a great place to stand today. We try that. We do that. We get lost in our own thoughts at times. We, we find ourselves in the, in the, in the self-pity party. We find ourselves trapped in bitterness. And we're standing in the middle of warfare, and there's, there's arrows and everything coming towards us, and we won't raise this shield. And we take a beating, and we, we find ourselves in the battlefield. We feel we're losing and we are losing and we're, we're, le- we're believing lies. We're letting bitterness rule and make our decisions for us. And we find things that have happened in the past are destroying our future because we hold on to them like truth and we're not giving them to Jesus. And we find ourselves without the breastplate of righteousness. And where are we? We're a mess. We find ourselves in addictions. We find ourselves in abuses. We find ourselves in horrible places. Why? Because we put that there because we haven't put on the breastplate of righteousness to stand strong and to stand against it and say, I'm going to stand against that fiery dart of bitterness. I'm going to stand against that and I'm going to say, I want what is truth in my life. Not what somebody has told me that they told me and it it hurt my heart and it's in my life and every time I fall asleep I think about that I'm ugly. That's a lie. But when I hold on to that breastplate of righteousness what do I have? I fight that fiery dart. I fight it. I don't hold to it as truth. It's a lie so I don't hold to it as truth. Lord I lift your name against every lie. You should wake up in the morning and say, Lord, if I'm in a mental thought battle with this, I pray today, Holy Spirit, help me to fight every lie today. Get up in the morning and do that. Say it out loud. Look in the mirror and say, we're going to fight every lie with the Holy Spirit today. 
Look at it. Do it. Claim it. You're fighting that in your mind, in your thought process. You think your life has no value. You find yourself in a horrible spot. You find yourself degrading yourself. And in your mind, you do not like yourself. I challenge you to get up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, let's fight the lies today. And I promise you, you will find that. You ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life and to help you to fight those lies. You cannot do it on your own. Standing in the battlefield without any armor is ridiculous. And we do it. We do it. My challenge to you today is listen to your thoughts. Verse 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I know my heart is deceitful. Holy Spirit, come into my life. My heart is deceitful and it desires things of the flesh. Help me today to replace my thoughts and my actions with yours. Help me to replace my thoughts with yours. Help me to replace my thoughts with the word. In verse 18, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for the Lord's people. Holy Spirit, we talked about this two weeks ago. I want to walk and to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. We must learn to pray in the Spirit in all occasions. We must learn to pray in the spirit. At times, I don't know what to pray, so I find myself praying in the spirit. Sometimes I'm, I'm out doing stuff, or I, I'm even the other day turning a wrench, and I begin to think about somebody, and I begin to just pray in the spirit for them. We need to learn to pray in the Spirit, hold that warfare to ourselves and say, Holy Spirit, today I don't know what's going on, but I pray right now. Learn to pray, Holy Spirit, help me right now. Help me in this conversation, Lord. Help me in this thought process. Some of us, help me get up out of bed today and to look positive at this world. Help me today in the midst of all of our TVs. And if you turn TV on today, I can't stand it. You turn the TV on today, it is nothing but the world is falling apart and everybody agrees that the world should fall apart. It's just so depressing. And if you find yourself in that, it is depressing. I am not ever depressed. I watch 10 minutes of the news and I'm depressed. Then I turn on the mute button and I wait for the weather and I turn it on and it says 75 and sunny. And I'm like, oh yeah, now we're back into this. I can't listen to that stuff. I'm telling you, if you listen to that in your mind, you will struggle. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. The desire that we need to have is to place into our lives. If you want some reading to do, I'm going to challenge you just to grab the book of Ephesians and read it this week. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions, verse 18. With this, be alert. Be alert of what you're thinking. Be alert. I'm going to challenge you. Write it down. I was surprised at what I wrote down. You have to listen, but I was surprised at what I wrote down. And I'm telling you this, it sharpened me. It sharpened me. One of my desires and things that I love to do is just as a man is I want to sharpen my mind. I want to be captive. I want to keep my mind captive. I want to keep it in control. It wants to do its own thing. And this sharpened me. Because every now and then I just kind of get all, you can't do that. What? Why did I think that? I'm going to challenge you. Be alert. Be alert. Pray continually. Be alert. 
be alert because sometimes I said some things to some people that I say all the time and, and I'm alert and I'm like, why did I say that? Be alert what you're thinking. Be alert what you're saying. Be alert and pray. But see, this whole foundation of all of this is wanting to have a desire to walk in a relationship with Jesus. That's where it all starts. I want to walk in a relationship with Jesus. I want to move forward. I want to walk within step with the Spirit of God. I want to. That's where the desire is. You see, in a couple of moments, I know many of us here today, maybe you're struggling today. You're saying, Pastor Russ, today, I want to pray a prayer. I want to pray a prayer aligning my life with Jesus. I want to ask Jesus to come into my life. Because what I want to do, I want to be alert. I want to grow stronger in my relationship with God. And the place to start is your relationship with Jesus. It's where you start. In a moment, I'm going to have an opportunity for you to raise your hand. Here at KCA, we're family. We will all pray this prayer together this morning. So I'm going to ask everybody in this place to stand with me. And as you stand, uh, maybe you're at home online. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads. Give me, give me 60 more seconds. And I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads and ask yourself this question. Where do you and Jesus stand today? Where do you and Jesus stand? With every head bowed and every eye closed, and you're asking yourself this question, where do you stand with Jesus today? If you're saying, Pastor Russ, today... I need to ask Jesus into my life. Wherever you're at, you're online, you're in this room right now, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now and say, I want to pray a prayer. Yes. I want to pray a prayer. Yes, absolutely. I want to pray a prayer asking Jesus to come into my life this morning. Absolutely. So what, you're in this room or online, I'm going to ask you, we're family KCA, let's pray this prayer out loud. Let's say this out loud together. Let's pray this prayer together. Let's do this. Dear Jesus, today I ask that you come into my life and forgive me. Forgive me of the sin that is in my life. And today I know that I am forgiven because of what you have done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. And I want to challenge you this week to be alert, to be strong, to be mighty. When that big diesel truck comes by you, stick your nose out the window and just smell that diesel. Let it remind you, strong and mighty. God has a phenomenal plan for you and your life. Don't listen to the accuser. Listen to what the Holy Spirit has for you. Pray, call out for help, for he is with you. Amen?